Everybody, to our daily gun show, we come to you live every day at midnight or maybe 1 26 in the morning uh, on the east coast and usually 9 p.m. on the west coast for about an hour each evening. We talk about guns, we have three gun related topics each day. We pick those topics on Mondays. So, if you'd like to be part of the show, uh, join us on Mondays and give us some suggestions or email us anytime dailygunshow at gmail.com. And that's how we come up with the topics for the show. We try not to uh, react to the media um, message of the day. So we just talk about general gun stuff. We just briefly talk about things so that you can take those conversations or those kernels, those ideas, off to other conversations on your own content. If you create stuff online, uh, videos or blogs or whatever it might be, or maybe just talking at the water cooler, at the gun shop, or at the gun show or whatever. So... Uh, Let's see, we run it live on YouTube. We uh, simulcast it over at gunchannels.com where we're watching the comments from the people that watch us live. Even though we're an hour and something late, meaning we're starting at 1.26 in the morning Eastern, we've got 11 people watching. We do appreciate that. Uh, we also appreciate the people that watch us after the show or listen or watch the, the shows after uh, we broadcast. And once we do, they render onto YouTube. And uh, we have full descriptions of what we talked about in the video descriptions over there. We put them on Facebook and on Twitter as much as we can to let people know they're out there. We have them on iTunes and SoundCloud. So you can listen to them as podcasts. And we really do appreciate the people that do listen to the stuff after the fact, especially those that leave us some feedback, that comment on the videos, that subscribe to our channels. Those actions help our videos to be recommended to more listeners, and that's one of our goals. So we do appreciate that. Uh, we have one host here tonight, and that's Bob. Woke up after I texted him. Thanks for joining me. No, I didn't, no, get, I didn't it. get it. I was just, I was just keeping an eye on it. Oh, right on. Now, you're coming in and out for me there. Is that you, or is that me? Am I breaking up? I don't know. I'm hearing a bunch of feedback from you, or I was. Let Not me now. turn down my volume a little bit, and let's see where my bandwidth is up all the way. I'm going to bring my bandwidth down to three quarters. Let me know if that screws around with it at all, or if it helps. But anyway, yeah, sorry, we started a little bit early, late tonight. That might happen on Thursdays. Clover does his uh, Thursday chats, which have been epic. Lots of tips and tricks for content creators. We get a lot of cool questions. Uh, I learned tips and tricks. I was telling them today that I've... I've Guess and I uh, made about an extra 140 bucks based in the last month or so based on his tips, and that's uh, based on changing stuff to my YouTube videos uh, using some of the tools he talked about. So awesome stuff! You can literally make hundreds of dollars listening to Clover's Thursday night chats. Anyway, so um, we ran a little bit late, so thanks, Bob, for joining us now, and thanks for the 13 people who are now watching us. That's an awesome number. So um, we've got people watching on the YouTube, on the Gun Channel site as well. As I mentioned, we simulcast on Gun Channels. So if you're listening to this in the future and you haven't checked out Gun Channels, do so. GunChannels.com. It's a uh, social media platform. It's a place to talk and chat and spy and sell and trade and ask questions and post videos and all that stuff. It's built by us for shooters so you don't have to worry about the thing turning anti-gun that can't happen and you don't have to worry about somebody coming along and saying this or that it's us so uh it's run by its members and uh it's a lot of fun it's four years old now and it's going strong so uh let's talk about the show we do this show every day at midnight today it's episode number 464 Ow. we're gonna be talking about ccw um ccw on a fixed budget and then we're going to talk about gun. What the hell is going on with my wrist? Gun gifts under twenty bucks. And then what's the best distance to actually train with? Wait, train at with different guns, and for different purposes. 
And I forgot exactly how Dano had us uh, word in that one or phrase in that one the other day. Uh, uh, we do a gun shop every day. We talk about guns of the day and other things. So uh, we'll dig in. Now we started late. Did you, uh, anything happen with Bob today that we want to talk about? Yeah, you know what we should be doing is we should be corking um, Mr. Clovertack when he runs this long. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. I was in that chat, though. So I was... I was no, that's why we couldn't cork him. He's sneaky that way. Sucks oh. you into it, and then next thing you know, yeah, he's putting our show back later. He's trying to steal our thunder, man. He can have it. Um, so, I don't know. Did you watch any of the shows today? It's been a crazy uh, day. Yeah, not that many. I think I might have caught a little bit of some of them, but yeah. Doing a lot of other shit today. Right on. All right, well, for some reason I'm yawning. We'll uh, dig into the show. It is uh, CCW. CCW on a fixed budget. So, I don't know, you're on a fixed budget. You try to CCW when you're down here, so you do that by just using whatever guns you already got. You bought very little stuff when yeah. you came down here to CCW, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, I buy the a cheap holster. I think I bought a cheap holster when I was down there, and um, yeah, that's about it. Man. Magazine pouch, I guess. I only had one magazine pouch, so. But other than that, yeah, a couple of cheap holsters, I guess, and that's... Uh, but all I bought because yeah, for me it's like I'm just gonna carry whatever I've got because I got no budget for carry guns. I can only do them when I'm down there. So <laughs> although I did, you know, I do have that Sig 250 now, which I'm kind of thinking that's gonna be my my carry gun just because yeah, it's cool. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a budget gun. I bought it because it's cheap. I thought I was drinking coffee and it's fruit juice. That was a surprise I wasn't expecting. So, um, coffee flavored. Yeah. It's like, what happened to this coffee? Oh, yeah. I put juice in here. All right. So, um, I'm going to, you're only going to have two points of view today because everybody else couldn't be bothered to show up at 1 26 or whatever in the morning. Um, I don't agree with Bob at all. I started out carrying like a, I don't know, chump, like cheap chump and, uh, luckily, I like to think I had the good fortune to get into firearms training um, after a long time of thinking I knew everything. I, I think like a lot of people, um, I grew up and I was in scouts and I had done hunter safety and I had parents that were totally familiar with firearms and I figured I was comfortable with them. I was you know, they were just like anything, like a pair of shoes or like a tennis racket. You know, they were just another item. I I treated them with respect, but I was completely aware of how to work them and how to be safe with them and how to use them and all that. So I considered myself trained because I was aware of the use of the item. I think a lot like somebody who knows how, you know, completely knows everything about a hammer. You know, it doesn't make you a, a great carpenter or necessarily the best, you know, craftsman or something, but you can master a hammer, right? So, you know, I had mastered the tool. Uh, went in the military, just more reinforcement on stuff, right? And then I just got out of it for a while. I don't know, for whatever reasons. And then as I was getting back into guns, uh, it was at the end of the assault weapons ban. That probably had something to do with it. Um, Y2K, that it was right around the same time, something to do with it. And uh, I started to conceal carry. And um, my first experiences with training at that point were... To a kid, who a guy who was however old I was back then, um, who figured I knew everything, didn't you weren't going to teach me nothing. So I went to a few classes that were, I guess you could say, aware of that mentality that people will have, and were able to get it through my thick head that no, I don't know nothing yet. Not that I'm ignorant. It's just that I had not been exposed to the whole complete picture, and what that means is the life-altering situation that a lethal force incident is going to be the, the the initial you know part of you're going to you you plan and you prepare and you practice so that if it ever happens you're not caught off guard that you're aware of it you've done everything to prevent it now that it's actually been forced upon you you've been able to react not just in reflex but based on you know intent you know, through lots of practice and skill and knowledge and a mindset that keeps you alive, right? 
but a lot of classes will just stop there and they won't talk about the legal, psychological, mental, um, family consequences to a lethal force encounter. So once I was exposed to that through my first classes, um, I went from, oh, there's a lot to learn to, wow, there's a lot of responsibility here when you strap this thing on every day and there's an obligation. You don't, I, I feel as a able-bodied member of society, doesn't matter that I'm a man or what age I am or none of that, that definitely doesn't matter if my military service, I think that as a member of society, I have an obligation. I'm, I'm able. If I saw a little old lady fall down the street, if I saw a child fall on the street, as a human being who's able to move over to them and help them up, I feel there's an obligation there, right? Especially to get them out of a dangerous situation. I don't have an obligation to, to keep, take care of them for the rest of their lives. I don't think they want that. But, you know, if you have the ability to help someone, then there's a certain obligation as a member of society to help them, right? I feel a firearm falls into that. So if you're going to take that obligation seriously and not just as a, you know, oh, I'm exercising a right, a frivolous right that it's all about what color or how sparkly it is. If you take it truly seriously and you're going to need that thing, I don't see carrying it on a budget. So I guess this was a long way of getting to, I see saving money on it in the long run, in the big picture, as buying a freaking police uh, trade-in or brand new Glock a decent holster from a very reputable manufacturer that isn't about gizmos and gadgets or any of that garbage, just a strong attachment point to your super strong belt, and then a nice uh, backup uh, mag holder with a real Glock mag in it, and uh, have a competent, practical, useful, it's always going to work, bar the most you know, obs obscene like Murphy's Law incident, that, con that combination of stuff is going to work. And although it's not the necessarily the bare bones, economic, cheapest thing you can buy, it's seriously lower than medium and can be obtained with just a little bit of months of layaway, layaway at most gun shops. And then you buy once and you cry once. You pay a little bit more than the absolute minimum, but you never have to buy anything else again. You can practice with that thing. You can be completely secure. It's going to work for you. And then... You're good to go. And then you can say that's a Glock fanboy all you want, but it's the 34 parts of a Glock third, third gen and the immaculate reputation it has, you know, barring all the deniers from people who hate the concept of a gun that's that's practical and useful. It's got the best reputation for a gun, period. You go with the numbers. It's the best gun to buy. You can replace parts at anywhere. Uh, there's so many gun uh, Glock smiths out there that uh, you'll have no problem keeping that gun up and running and it never will go down in the first place. Uh, in a caliber like 9mm, you're good to go. It covers all bases. It's probably the caliber that the local law enforcement uses and you're done. You that That's how you ultimately save money is you buy something that's practical and useful and you never have to buy it again. Well, that's why I like that SIG 250 for that. And plus, it's, um, you know, I don't care about it. So it's not like when I'm carrying the high power, um, you know, you're always worried, ah, I'm going to scratch it or something. Like, I'm not real anal retentive about my guns, but I don't like scratching them up if I don't have to. So, yeah, this way I've got kind of a perfectly functional, inexpensive gun that, you know, does the job. It's good enough for me. So because of Dano and Smeggy and Jimmy, you're not going to get any other in input on this one. Of course, you could contribute in the chat, and we see we got some people doing that. Um, no, I thought we did on the Gun Channel side. We don't. But on the YouTube side, I thought I saw some stuff. Uh, Monty's asking if Bob has ever concealed his 25. What 25 does Bob have? Well, that's that one I was showing. That's actually gonna be mine when my when my uh, brother dies. So. Oh yeah, that's why he keeps bringing his brother, quote unquote, lunch, as a goodwill gesture, as a quote unquote. Goodwill. You know what? He likes cookie dough, and it's not like he can get out of bed anymore. So I mean, you know. Well, what a dog just never refrigerates the eggs. Big deal. That's just an oversight. You don't need to. If they're egg Fresh from a free-range chicken. Mm -hmm. Pops little holes in them so they start to get the, the botulism. Only uses dented cans. Dented on the scene. 
All right, so um, Hawk is or Tony saying I'm in a wheelchair, so so I use a lap bag fanny pack to carry. Yeah, I had a friend that did that. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess there's not too many options other than shoulder, and then everybody's looking at it, and it's in your freaking way all the time. Uh, but I was going to say, I don't know, I've never actually thought about all the different ways you could carry from the chair. And I don't know, have you ever thought about it or had people talk about it, Bob, that if you got a chair, then uh, it's not like a purse or something where people are like, oh, don't carry off your body because you're going to leave it somewhere. Like, you're pretty much not leaving your chair nowhere. Yeah. So I could totally see having it. I mean, I knew guys that would keep their cigarettes in cool places on their chair or like their wallet, you know, because it's not like you're going to sell your wallet. What's the point? When you got that chair sitting there, you got all kinds of little places to hide stuff for those cushions and things. So I don't oh, know. I, I, I've seen things like for hunting where they put a platform on a chair for somebody, but I don't know if I've ever seen too much CCW options. That's an idea. You know, you could have a nice dual carry. So you could have one on either side. So while you're wheeling it, you know, if you needed to, you could just pop up with from the left or the right, whichever way you had to pivot, you know. I think that'd be kind of cool. You could get very tactical. Well, weight's probably not a big issue, especially if it's like some Ruger LCRs. Have yeah. like you're one on one side, one on the other side, no matter what you got going on, you got one on both sides right away. That could work. I'd rather have SIG 2 so, so you got some, you know, real firepower instead of like five rounds, 357. What did you say? Some kind of 380 SIG? No, SIG 226. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you block boys. I just said Rugers. What are you talking about? No, yeah. You SIG deniers. Everything's a Glock. Everything's uh, a Glock. If it's not a SIG. Uh, yeah, well, we know what we know what we think about that. Uh, but as far as the fanny pack is the zipping. So I guess my thing would be I'd probably depending on how big your chair is and how big you are, I guess, um, set it next to you and just leave it open, and just not have to undo the unzip part, right? Again, unless. Uh -huh. Going downstairs or something, you're probably not getting thrown out of there very often. And then, uh, you know, you got it discreet, but you can still whip it out if you needed to. Yeah, I wonder if there's a way to just clip the... And we haven't talked about this in a while, but I'd be all about, if you got any kind of a handicap, whatever, placard, license plate, whatever, then boom, you got CCW. It's like constitutional carry. Let's talk about a, a victimized demographic, like, you know sons of bitches are sons of bitches and they're going to go after the people who they believe are going to give them the least resistance so i believe they should have the most to fear the bad guys should have the most to fear of a lethal repercussion from someone who's let's say differently abled hmm. yeah i would I, I you know if there's some way you can i'd figure out how to kind of conceal a holster on the side of the chair if i could But, yeah, you know, I guess, I don't know, I just don't like the idea of carrying in a bag, like in a fanny pack kind of thing. I guess you can get fanny packs that have holsters built in. Those would be, yeah, I could see that, right in the middle of your belly, you know. Mm. Like if you've got one that's actually got a holster in it so that you don't have to unzip. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen the kind, like you're talking, they'll have like maybe a stiff piece of foam or even a kydex or something to keep the back just you know it, you know open or big and then have that piece of elastic or some sort of a holsterish thing maybe a strap but probably just the angle of it retains it in there and then some kind of a tab or thing that you yank on and then two zippers like or velcro or usually zippers will open from the top and the side so that you know you're exposing the whole thing and then you just reach your other hand in grab it um but again if you're sitting all the time and the fanny pack is just basically an alternative to a pocket i don't know if you need to waste time doing the zip i guess it depends on like i say how big it is and you are and the chair is and what kind of clothes you got but oh yeah i mean there's so many variations um but yeah i, I can see the fanny pack being okay if it's like built to actually function as a holster as well as a fanny pack right uh i don't know maybe there's a problem i don't say cripple because um, well, I'm not trying to be PC, although I don't like it when people say stupid shit about people that are differently able, but I'm talking, 
um, wheelchairs, everybody can be in a wheelchair. So if you think that, oh, I don't, I don't need a wheelchair, then great, like go break a leg or go do something, especially big fat guys. Oh, I don't need a wheelchair, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, all you got to do is hurt your leg, and now you're in a wheelchair for a while. So yep. uh, anybody's got the potential of being in a wheelchair. And, um, you know, just sometimes you're in a situation like it, right? Horseback riding, bicycle, that's basically the same thing. So uh, I'm all about keeping that in mind because we sit down quite a bit, even if we ain't required to or, you know, have to or some shit. Yeah. But I appreciate it. Thanks. But, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to be inclusive to everybody who's doing it. Dude, is very PC. Unlike me. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so then that'll take us to the next segment. I think we covered that one pretty good for just being the two of us. We don't need these other guys anyway. Maybe we should cut them out, keep all the money, and just do it ourselves again. He's, uh, yeah, but the problem is, even if we keep all the money, it's still nothing. <laughs> yeah, but at least it feels better to have half of nothing than like only a third or a quarter of nothing. So we're going to dig into gun stuff, which is gifts under 20 bucks today. Maybe we can talk about... Uh, it's so easy, though. Apple. holsters. Huh? Ammo. I mean, gifts under 20 bucks, easy. Ammo. I don't know. But first, we like to take a break between the first and second segment of the show every single day, because we do this show every single day, uh, and to me, feature one of the members over on Gun Channels. No, no, no. We, we're not starting that again. We do it five days a week. Five days a week. Not every single day. Oh, well, I do it every single day, so some of you take a couple of days off. Um, oh. I just started doing it every day now. So anyway... Uh, we try to feature one of the members over on Gun Channels every day between the first and second segment. And in addition to members of Gun Channels, we're featuring some of the people that we support over on the Patreon. Uh, so if you go over to Patreon and check out the Gun Website's uh, account over there, um, subscribe to, I think, 30 other channels. Most of them are gun-related. This one isn't necessarily gun-related, but it has done. he has done some gun-related stuff. And he is an interesting... Am I not logged in? Uh, he is an interesting um, uh, channel. So why are I not seeing... Oh, I have to be a $6 Patreon to see that one. Oh. So I think we've showed it before, but we're going to... Uh, I don't know. I thought there might be one I could click on here that would give us an indication. I guess this first one in the list here, we could click on it real quick. It's like a First Amendment right of, of, of also, I think, it play, how so? Because the Internet really is a means of, of public expression. And, this, and so if you limit people's, if, if companies can say, well, we don't like that you're um, organized against Verizon and, you're, and we're, and we're going to throttle your, your message. What do you think about companies like Facebook or Twitter or YouTube who are banning, like, maybe certain conservative or far-right figures from their, their platforms? That's their decision to make. So what happened to the free speech issue? Well, um, I, you know, I think we'll stop this conversation. Okay. Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, so right there, I think that's a great example of why this guy's cool. So he's kind of new to the scene, and he's gone to a couple of different rallies or whatever you want to call get-togethers where people are out there echo chambering each other uh, with, like, some kind of weird message. And he challenges them on it, literally just says, what's up? Tell me about what your message is. And these people haven't, literally haven't articulated their, their anything, their position, why they're there, nothing. They're just there because they're, I don't know why. So they're not even able to express why. And it's great to be able to have an impartial camera in front of them while someone asks them simple questions like that. And uh, I've thought that the one on guns, we've, you've seen that one on gu the gun one, right, Bob? That this guy did? I don't think I did, no. I, I've seen some of his stuff. He's, okay, he's well, considered alt-right, but, I mean, he's not. But, you know, the, the left calls everybody alt-right nowadays. Well, every time he talks to somebody on a left-leaning rally, they'll eventually call him alt-right because he's making them articulate why they're there and they can't do it, and that, to them, is embarrassing, I'm sure. So he he's, you know, illustrating how dumb they are and they persecute him for it. So uh, he doesn't do anything to lead them into it. He just allows them to be as dumb as they are, basically. And uh, anyway, so that gun one I thought was super interesting. And um, 
Uh, I don't know why I'm not finding it. But anyway, I was going to say, I think you'd seen it. Because whenever I first found it, I showed it a bunch of times. This is it right here. So um, anyway, right, just guys, a creative and interesting Creek, channel. Well, I mean, the semi semi-automatic weapons. That means one one round per pull of the trigger. That's a standard. Like what, that's what cops carry on their belts. That's a, what most people decide to use for home defense. It's about eighty-five percent of the guns out there. Okay, you shouldn't be able to turn a an, a semi-automatic gun into an automatic gun. There's no reason for that. There, I don't understand that beyond trying to kill a bunch of people. Sure, people are going to do illegal modifications all the time. Seems like the NRA. So. Anyway, if that was an interesting one, and he's got others. So we try to feature one of the members over at Gun Channels, or in this case, members that we feature over on, or that we support over on Patreon. The idea is to remember there's other content creators out there, lots of them, and uh, check them out. Help share, use the uh, different platforms, the uh, pieces of the platforms out there, the tools on them uh, to help people like this out. Uh, that helps you understand what you know the platforms, how they work, what's what's useful. Like you know, you've got some experience doing it and when we need to move something like uh, uh the hr 38 where we want to get everybody aware of it you know we've got the that, all that down so uh we can keep going oh, yes yeah. gun I mean, stuff he, gun he, oh, yeah he does a very respectful um job at interviewing people where he make but he asked them to explain themselves and 99.9 percent .9 of them can't no, like I say, they're just there because they think it's cool or they feel obligated or, you know, it's their thing. And then you ask them why, and they seriously can't even remember why they've been told to be there, let alone be able to accurately re regurgitate it. White guilt. <coughs> White guilt. <coughs> yeah, it's yuppies. You know, and just, I don't know, millennials. I don't know. There's something wrong with people these days. <laughs> um all right so then we're going to talk about where to go uh gun stuff gun gifts under twenty dollars well i've already dropped the mic on this one man yeah well, oh, yeah, well. <clears throat> yeah right. i guess so if you're you what are you going to do you got to make sure that people either are go shooting with you enough they know what calibers you want or I guess you're just going to have to buy new guns. I guess that could be worse things. Like, oh, you bought me 38 Supers. Great. So is this your way of saying, I get a new gun? I need I need a new gun. You bought me 38 Smith & Wesson Short. Awesome. You know, four guns shoot this, so I get to go buy a new one? Like, I guess you could ask Grandma. But ammo seems like socks or something. It's, like, totally boring. Uh, yeah, it's boring, but at the same time, who wants another cleaning kit? Who wants another, especially that a dollar cleaning kit? Yeah, you know, um, or, yeah, shit like that. Accessories like that. Who cares, right? What about like go to a bookstore though, or online, or whatever, and find a book that I don't know, a guide or something, or a... I've gotten books that were okay. I've got you know, uh, handguns of the world and stuff like that, like big hardcovers, and they're cool. But same time, it's you know, it's a book. You look at it eight or nine times, and then it just sits in the bookshelf. Yeah. I'd rather have something that's consumable. Or, you know, maybe a gun sock. Maybe, maybe you, you know. That's practical, but it's practical. That's like getting a sock. Yeah. Like you, you needed socks, and it's yeah. Christmas, so here, I'm not going to try. I love getting socks for Christmas, man. Then I don't have to go buy them at Walmart. Usually when you get people gifts socks, they're usually better socks than you buy at Walmart. See, this is tough, because what, are we talking about? like what our people are going to get us as gun owners or what we're going to get other gun owners um, i think what we're going to get other gun owners that's the way i read it and i would just say get them ammo like who does not want ammo and if you know another gun owner you probably know his caliber if not just get a nine millimeter because everybody should have one anyway it's the new 22 you know that's true Actually, now that I think about it, the nine millimeter has become the new twenty-two. Like everybody's got it in carbines and you know for plinking guns. 
That's true. It's actually a little bit better than the twenty two as far as just a gun to take to the range and shoot recreationally because it can be reloaded, right? Yeah. Although it'd be cooler if we were reloading twenty fives or something and there was little tiny robots that would do the collecting and the reloading, but Yeah. Well, uh, that would be the thing. Reloading what about like a little monkey robot hybrid. Because a monkey by itself, you know, it's a spaz. And a robot by itself is gonna take over the world. So you hinder the robot by having monkey parts. And then you enhance the monkey by having robot parts. And then that monkey robot hybrid can oh. pick up all the brass super efficiently, maybe even be reloading with its tail or something while you're at the range. So you're shooting and it's catching the brass and reloading it and feeding it right back to you with a loaded mag. If it's a robot and it's bulletproof, then couldn't we send it out to change targets even though the range was still hot? Definitely. And part of it would be them carrying the target out there. You could shoot at it while it's carrying it. It could run around or dodge things. It could oh, carry yeah. around little steels, and you'd be like, ding, 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 like that pig out there and yeah. for three points. You know, if there's a little monkey robot carrying that pig around on yeah. its back, that'd be super fun to shoot at. And it would kind of be walking, so it'd be much like a pig, like a real pig. It would kind of be going up and down with a cadence can, like that. Can you just make the monkey robots run out there and shoot at them? Now, the problem is we're saying under $20, and at least I haven't found a monkey robot that was under $20 yet. I haven't found one that really worked that well yet either. Travis is saying gift certificates. I think that's safe, right? Um, especially if you or I know people who do this. Yankee kind of did it. He'll tell everybody, they'll tell everybody gift certificates from like this one spot so that instead of getting five dumb $20 gift certificates, you get $100 worth of gift certificates for a spot, you know, in, in whatever the best spot is that you need something from so that you can accumulate all of them into one purchase, right? I think that's a that's a brilliant idea. I think that's uh, that's probably the best idea is gift certificates and just everybody. Well, I almost agree with you, except Gizzard came in with even a better one. And I think this one is better in a couple of ways. Uh, it's it's consumable, like what you're saying. Yeah. It can be unique, and it can be something that a person wouldn't normally buy themselves. And right. you have lots of options, and that's the targets. So huh? $20 budget, it's a ton of paper targets. So if they're into zombies or they're into hunting or they're into CCW, you can get appropriate targets at this point. Yeah, for 20 bucks, you can get like an actual bleeding zombie head, I think. Exactly. So that's the thing. You can get paper targets or you can go nuts and get something interesting like one of them self-healing absorbent rubber dealies that are three-dimensional. Uh, nope. Somebody's sure. talking about shooting the bottles. I think Yankee was talking about shooting the bottles the other day. But I like those little balls that you lay on the ground and shoot at them. At least if you've got a place where there's grass or dirt or something you can shoot into the ground, uh, you put one of them balls out there and you just keep shooting at it. To me, that's like the ultimate fun. It moves. It, you can shoot it while it's moving. Sometimes, if you got a you know fast enough reaction time, uh, it's it, you know it shoots. You can shoot it forever. The worst part about it is if you forget it out there. Yeah, well, but those things are like thirteen bucks or something. I think they're not super expensive, and they really do last a long time. And that for me is one of those things that I'm way too cheap to even ever buy one because I'll just shoot it a piece of nothing. I'll shoot a rock or something. But uh, once I've got one, I'm like, oh yeah, it's fun. So I, mean, I think that's a perfect shooter gift. Yeah, I, I just go shoot gophers, so that's kind of the same, right? Because they're moving. No, it's not the same. Oh, yeah, they're moving, and they react when you hit them, and they, yeah, that's yeah, a lot more fun, actually. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I can see it, I'm, I'm depending on what kind of range you got. But, but then you got targets, paper targets, even. so you can oh. give somebody, like, a paper target, a, a set. I mean, they probably already make something like an assortment, but you could go to a range... A range, not just a gun shop or like this big box store, but an actual range will have a lot of times targets individually for a quarter or something. No, so yeah. now you figure four four per week per month or whatever, you know, times twelve, and for twenty bucks you get them. Um, like you think about three points again. This range that Bob and I have shot at outside of Tucson, they've got maybe eight, nine different kind of targets there. The other range in town has maybe twelve. You could go to a couple of different ranges, go out and come back, hit a couple of ranges on that trip and get targets that are like there's one target that looks like a picture of a fence with a bunch of bottles on it or cans or something. There's like playing cards that they have like a bunch of cards and you play like card games. There's I've seen the baseball and the battleships and those kind of things. 
you go to the indoor range and you're going to get the different kind of silhouettes like an actual police qualification one an nra and then you give somebody 12 different targets now they've got a different target for each month and especially if they're creating content and stuff now you're giving them a little something that they can you know add to their channel yeah I really like the target idea because especially as shooters, it's something that, again, we may be stuck in our ways. I won't buy nothing. I always get shooting seats. That's it. Like, I won't, you know, I just don't see any reason to buy anything besides I that. How many free every time I buy something? It's like, yeah. Uh, Gizzard say in a camo hat and shirt. I don't know about the shirt, but the hat, I think is a good idea. You can get uh, made in the USA hats that are made by shooters for shooters. So in other words, they don't have that stupid metal thing on the top of a baseball hat that kills you when you put your ear pro on. Uh, you know, that little button thing that's on the top of a baseball hat. As soon as you yeah. put ear pro on and do anything, like that thing starts beating into the top of your head. It's annoying as hell. So I can take off all my hats. Yeah. All you need is a pair of wire cutters. You can take them off. Oh, well, if on a cheap hat, that's holding together the top of the hat. So I have done that to remove it. And then the hat starts to fray right from the top. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, a good hat won't actually free. It's just a button. But yeah, we used to. I'm talking about the hats that are made specifically to have a, just a piece of fabric up there. Exactly. They're made in the USA. They're 20 bucks. You can get them from Tactical Tailor, other places. We've done a couple of different videos on them. It's, they're pretty easy to locate. Just type in made in the USA hat. Get them in the camo color or the choice of color that they like. And then uh, usually they have the Velcro panel on the front, sometimes on the sides, even on the back sometimes. And uh, that way, they got another place to do their thing. Even if they uh, wear a hat that's their hat, it's kind of nice sometimes as a hat person to have a spare one for the range bag or in the back of the truck or something. Um, so it's like your hat blows off, you got another hat, right? True. Yeah. But then you got to know, well, I guess with caps, you don't need no hat size, but if it's like a, yeah. Well, not for the kind of hat I'm talking about. Yeah, they have adjustables. But, yeah, if you're getting somebody something nicer, you'd probably have another head size. It's yeah. weird, but sometimes you just go up and touch them on the head, act like you're giving them a head massage, and then just run over to, like, a piece of paper and draw it out, and you can measure it. Yep, not likely. Uh, they're saying, pants are saying Korean AK mags. See, that's boring. Maybe, well, if you see for 20 bucks, if, if you got a bigger budget, you know, buying somebody an interesting mag for taking pictures on the Instagram could be neat. Um, but I don't know if the $20 range. Uh, if you know somebody that's into AKs, the little cleaning uh, jars or bottles are usually like three bucks. And pretty much they're all different. I mean, it's, t it's kind of tough to buy a bunch that are the same. So uh, go and find an assortment of those at a gun shop or a gun show. Well, bottles? I got it. I all of those things. You know the little things that come with an SKS or an AK, the little yeah. bottles yeah. that hold oil? Yeah, yeah that's kind of a neat thing to collect once you figure out that pretty much they're all different, different colors, different shapes, different little screw heads and different writing on them. Uh, okay. They're kind of neat to put on a bookshelf or on a gun rack or something to, you know, just a little thing that accumulates. And like I say, they're so cheap that they don't cost nothing to ship. They're empty, and uh, you can get them at gun shows all the time. People seem to have bins of them. Because nobody really uses them for oil. They're stupid. I've never even unwrapped mine from the paper there, Brian. I got one with my poison, too. Yeah, that's how most people are, right? They just don't uh, they don't use them. They don't care about them. And there's only the... Like I say, once people figure out, oh, I can collect them? Dang, I didn't even realize. And they go look, and they've got probably four or five of them already. Yeah, that's just yeah, more shit to collect. I'm trying to collect less shit these days. I remember what I, yeah, yeah, I just want to have less. Okay, so here's another idea, and this is something you could probably even make if you were that kind of person or if you're a kid and you're trying to build something for your dad or something or your mom. Um, a firearms logbook or like an inventory book. That's the kind of thing that some people don't even do, like don't even keep track of their inventory or their maintenance logs or anything like that. And it can be as simple as getting a three ring binder and going online and figuring out some of the formats that people use. And then um, it could be something like going and printing something on a laser printer. Again, looking online and finding some formats that people use for the, like a journal or a, like a maintenance type of records. And then, uh, you know, binding those with some stuff from a, 
See what happens when you start talking about doing publishing books and stuff like that, man. It just like, whew. yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. I was, I was kind of thinking what'd be cooler would be a, a really nice journal type book, rather than you know just a plain three ring. But you know, well, like a right in the rain. No, like a real journal, leather bound book. Well, that's what I'm saying. The right in the rain is that paper that you can write. It doesn't get wet. It doesn't disintegrate and in water. And uh, they make a couple of different versions that are, you know, few pages, many pages, bound, spiral. And it, for twenty dollars, you could buy one. You're not going to get like a personalized cover or nothing. But it's is. It, I mean, it's basically like those little block notebooks I have. Those from Right in the Rain, if you buy them, are like seven dollars or something. Yeah. Nice, nice. Nice book to keep track of your guns and ammo or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Just a journal, yeah. Well, like and if we're talking fight. under twenty dollars, free is under twenty dollars, and you can get those little spiral notebooks anytime Glock is set up. Not every time, but a lot of times when Glock is set up, either for a GSSF match, one of their own matches, if they're at a trade show or some kind of a event, and Glock is there with a booth. Uh, ask them if they've got any notebooks. A lot of times they'll have them there and just not have them out because they're one of the more expensive things they give away, but um, they do give them away. So uh, ask. And if you really want one for nothing and you got time, you know, not maybe now when it's right before Christmas, but uh, when you've got time to do it, you can just write to Glock or call them at their 800 number and say, hey, I heard you can give away swag, and they'll send you a pen, a pencil, a patch, um, maybe even a hat, and usually the, the spiral notebook right away. Um, you can ask gun shops that have a lot of Glocks if they've got any of the spiral notebooks because a lot of times they'll get a giant box of stuff from Glock to go along, you know, just to help market their their products. Uh, sometimes, again, they'll just have them in the back, and if you ask them, they're like, yeah, sure, you can have a couple. Uh, so free stuff works. And, again, you give somebody a couple of Glock notebooks, they're awesome. They're right in the rain, they're black, and they just say Glock on them. Even if you hate Glock, just turn them around, and they're black right in the rain, $7, $12 book for nothing. And like Bob's saying, that you can just leave that in your bag. Um, it's the kind of thing, like some, a lot of people just won't go buy a notepad. You know, you don't think about it. You don't want to waste the money. You just don't do it. Once you have one, you're like, you start figuring out, oh, I can leave a note for somebody. Like, oh, I can leave a note for myself. Like, I can use the back of it for a target or something. Like, you can start coming up with ideas all the time of how you can use this little notebook. Yeah. Uh, well, Chris on the, on the YouTube side is saying uh, flashlight. I have to agree there. Again, I'm going to say the same thing I did with CCW. Uh, those stream lights for under 20, that tri one AAA battery ones, I, yeah. as soon as I started using them, I, I have not found a better light out there. They're, huh. they're a really nice one. I guess it's possible somebody doesn't like the clicker on the back, but um, I think as a gift, you can't go wrong with uh, a little stream light. Yeah. Oh, Gary saying Hobby Lobby has unique wall hangings, First Amendment signs, and that kind of stuff. I guess I didn't think about that, but um, you know, things for a man cave or a gun room. If yeah. you're talking about getting gifts for if your kids listening to this, talking about getting gifts for a dad or a mom or somebody or brother or whatever, and you're on the cheap, and or you're just trying to look for something that's unique and hard to buy, is again think about gun shops that are fairly large. Sometimes actually think about any gun shop, honestly. And give them a call, or if you're there and they're not real busy, ask. I wouldn't ask in front of a bunch of customers because then they're likely to not be as open because they don't want to open the floodgates. But if you can get them alone and or you know to ask somebody quietly, hey, do you have any like Glock posters or Glock swag that you don't want, um, or fill in the blank company that they might if they like if they're a Kimber man, uh, dealer, they might have Kimber stuff if they're a Smith and Wesson dealer. So whatever it is your people, or your gun people are into, um, and you want to help them decorate their gun room, that could be done for zero money too, or for very cheap. You know, even if they're a jerk gun shop and they're going to charge you for the swag they got for free, probably not going to be much. So, um, you know, I've seen people walk out of gun shops with everything from like those cool mats that they'll put on the counter to uh, T-shirts and hats and range bags. Uh, you buy a big enough order from a manufacturer as a gun shop, you're getting a lot of stuff. And some shops appreciate it. Some of it goes to their employees. Some of them just keep it. I've seen multiple shops where they get that stuff, you know, on a Monday, and it's given away by Monday afternoon. They just have no interest in having it around, and they see it as promotion for their stuff, so they promote. They get rid of it. 
Uh, George is saying a trauma kit. That's a great idea. Um, 20 bucks, you probably get a tourniquet. That's really all you need as a gun guy. Yeah, through that. Well, a tourniquet and a thing of gauze. Ma mainly a tourniquet, I think, is probably, at least for me, it was a better way to go because uh, saying, oh, yeah, you should have like a blowout kit. You should have, you know, X, Y, Z. Anything more than one item can be validated. Like there's a way to justify why you'd carry around some gauze or some gloves or something else, a baggie even, to use as a seal or something. But uh, just a tourniquet by itself. I like the little SWAT one because it's in a little bag. It's not much bigger than a pack of cigarettes and it's more durable than any pack of cigarettes. Um, that alone is useful for a dog, a kid, your own self. Uh, it's not the perfect tourniquet, but it is a very decent one for carrying around. And they're like 12 bucks, I think, something like that. And it's, again, the kind of thing, if someone isn't already of that mindset, it might be an interesting gift because you're not only giving them something useful, but something they might not have bought themselves. And you never know, maybe you save a life. Clover Tech saying the tactical leprechaun patch. It's a great idea. There's plenty of people over on uh, the YouTube, on the Instagram, uh, on the uh, other social platforms out there that are branding, that are doing their their projects and they're, they're doing things with merchandise. They maybe have spread shirt shirts. Most those are usually under twenty bucks. A lot of them will have stickers or patches or or refrigerator magnet or some kind of thing. And a pen, huh? What'd you say? Playing cards, maybe. Well, yeah, not too many channels are doing playing cards, but yeah. Um, but I'm saying a way to you know spend twenty bucks maybe is to get you know some stickers from five or six different channels and give them to somebody who again might not have bought them themselves, but now they have something to put on their their gun uh, case or their safe or a toolbox. Or something. Jimmy must have woke up. Hey, hey, hey. He was he texted me like I still get paid, right? And I'm like, hell no. So all of a sudden he's in here. <laughs> he acts like just because we're gonna do the show almost two hours late, he doesn't have to show up on time. I swear I was here on on time for a, a moment sometime. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So, um, no worries. We're talking about gun gifts for gun people under 20 bucks. Um, Harry's saying, bought some, wait, uh, Gary's saying a nice pair of shooting gloves. That's an interesting one. Um, the gloves I use are more like $80, so that you wouldn't be able to get. I'm trying to think if I could think of a $20 pair of gloves. You know, I was going to say, like, maybe those mechanics or something like that, but they're not, like, technically shooting gloves. Oh, no, that's a good point, and the mechanics are a great uh, $80 glove that's at a $20 price point or something like that. You I get a not, not be yeah. a girl and, you know, not need gloves. Jeez. Well, you don't need gloves. If you don't shoot hard, then you don't need gloves. You can have oh, your, your hands and just bleed. never even bleed. You can, just have, you can just have calluses on your hands from doing real man's work instead of just, you know. No, see, you don't know. <laughs> Because you can't run, you cannot run an AK or an AR for that matter. You can't run either of those guns hard without wailing on your hands. It's just not possible. So that's like saying, oh, just run your jackhammer without any kind of protection. Like, just big deal. Oh, I've, I've run a jackhammer without any kind of protection. Yeah, no, you, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. You haven't had a job where you run a jackhammer every single day blowing through sidewalks or something. I've had to run a jackhammer because I worked as an electrician and we had to blow up sidewalks in order to put cables in. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't do it as a job where you do it every day and you're going to tell me. You, okay, whatever. So Bob's a superhero Canadian who doesn't need gloves, but everybody else in the world understands that skin, you don't need to replay, well, replay skin. You build calluses up and then you don't have to worry about your skin sloughing off. Yeah. Bob don't crack. You're not doing it enough. Yeah, Bob's hardened. He, he just calluses. <laughs> Let's callous up our feelings and get past the gloves that Bob re will not abide by. But uh, mechanics gloves? Uh, I don't know. I get ammo. Usually that's in or around 20 bucks. I don't know. Let me go back to ammo. That's I don't know what... <laughs> so, um, yeah, 20 bucks. It's boring, though. Super boring. Here, here's some potato chips. I got you some potato chips for Christmas. 
got some, some tuna, cans of tuna. It was bar, it was cheaply priced tuna. Right. Yeah, no labels on it, but I'm sure it's not cat food. This, well, the dents aren't even really all that much on the seams. Well, I know if they had a twenty dollar limit or something like that, I'd rather get a you know a box of some BS ammo than you know some twenty dollar pop up sites or something like that. You know, I don't know. When I no, said no. this and dropped the mic, I said box of ammo, drop the mic. Yeah, because it's just ammo. That's the only answer. <laughs> There's some right, neat well, bayonets out there for under twenty bucks. I mean, they're not like super collectible, but there's something. There's stuff out there like that too. I don't know. Oh, dude, there's tons of collectible bayonets under twenty bucks. Yeah, you you hit the you could probably I've seen. Yeah, you can for twenty dollars you at a good gun show, you can probably get two bayonets, and start off an interesting collection of I don't know World War Two I guess World War One bayonets. They're still pretty cheap. Yeah. Very plentiful. Uh, you can get AK ones for twelve fifteen bucks so easily. Uh, stupid VZ fifty eight bayonets. Nobody wants those. Five or six bucks. Yeah. All right. So um, that was gun gifts under twenty bucks. You're welcome. Uh, oh, you know what? No, there's another one that's important. Uh, memberships to Second Amendment organizations. Uh, you can get gift memberships. You can give somebody a membership who is not, you know, has not already been been a member. Uh, but you can give them to kids, you know, kids that people don't think like, oh, you know, your god kids, your grandkids, something like that. Uh, stocking stuffers, the kids might not care, but you're putting numbers on the on the rosters or whatever now when these organizations use those numbers to justify sponsorships or uh, influence with politicians. Uh, also, can you imagine being a little kid, having a conversation and whatever version of this is 20, 30 years from now, and you're the little kid who can say, Oh, I've been a member of Gun Owners of America since I was born because my uncle Bob got me a membership and I've always been a member of Gun Owners of America. Like, that's a kind of a neat thing you get to give your little kid. You know, oh, I've always been a member of the NRA and the Gun Owners of America and Second Amendment Foundation. That's because I'm that pro 2A. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it could be something that'll stick with the kid. Yeah, I mean, they could turn out to hate it, but what are you doing? The worst case scenario is you're giving a nonprofit some money. Best case scenario, you're making your kid like ultimate 2A. Yeah, because he's going to, you know, uh, later in his life when his friends are all telling him, oh, yeah, it's bad, it's bad, you know, Second Amendment's bad, blah, blah, blah. He's going to think to himself, well, you know, my dad wasn't or my grandpa wasn't. So they're wrong, and I'm going to become 2A compliant as well. Like a like a Hallmark commercial or something like that, you know. The like dad comes down and hands the son something and opens it up, and then like they pan into like a Bass Pro Shop, uh, a Bass Pro Shop, like a Gun Owners of America, you know, thing or something like that. I picture like, like there's like a commercial and like there's this kid and he's out in the backyard, and then like tyranny comes along, and the kid like resist tyranny and, it, and it's like and it has to run off and then the dad comes out and he goes how did you learn to resist tyranny like that and the kid looks at him and goes i learned it from watching you dad yeah and it's like special moments <laughs> gun owners of america or something like that yeah, that'd be awesome so uh monty's saying bayonet on the 22 short naa 22 short like on those little revolvers too bad the bayonets have been discontinued a long time ago i think they were 20 dollars but they were discontinued a long time ago, so they'd be difficult to find, and most of the collectors are grabbing them up. So if you do find them for under $20, grab them, because whoever you give that to, you're giving them like $100. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be hard to find that one under $20 nowadays. So it's possible to find them on shelves for 19 Shit, I should have been looking at that during the tour. I could have been paying for the tour just in tiny revolver bayonets. <laughs> like, hey, this is a nice shop blowing dust off their like little pegboard thing like oh yeah you got some of these little bayonets and revolvers all right well i think we've murdered that subject so we'll keep yeah. going on to training what is the best distance now let's do this gun shop of the day yeah let's do gun shop of the day we don't have a gun shop today because i've been doing other stuff and i didn't put one in here but we do have something else to talk about in its place and that is I was listening to the news the other day. This has nothing to do with guns so much as like rage against the media. So I'm listening to the news the other day. 
I'm deciding if this is worth actually talking about or not, but I'll describe it this way. <clears throat> they were describing a crime that occurred. And instead of just saying, like, a crime occurred in Tucson and it had to do with the mail, they basically said, here's a crime that occurred and here's exactly how the person did it. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm a freaking been alive for decades and I don't think I'm like, what do you call it? Like, uh, you know, kept away from the bad parts of life or whatever. I've seen naive. Really bad. Huh? Yeah, naive. Yeah, exactly. Not too naive. And I've never thought about this little scam before, which they basically, in the little news blurb, just broke down completely. Like, here you go, bloop, bloop, bloop. And I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. I would have never thought it was that easy to pull this scam. And I'm like, thank you, idiot news people. Like, if I'm first learning about it, there has to be some other unscrupulous, jerk, lazy criminal out there who's like, oh, thank you, and is now doing that tonight, you know? So, oh, yeah, probably a whole bunch of them. Yeah, so that was something that I was just like, you know what, I'm going to go write this in the show notes because it was that annoying that it made me think that I'm going to bring it up again, just that at least right. somebody out there raged against their idiot idiocracy on the news. News do that all the time, right? Like the... Uh, after the Boston bombing, they're going on about, you know, oh, they took fireworks apart, and then some Democrat, Rachel something or other, some dyke, um, you know, nothing wrong with dykes, they're just, you know, different people. But anyway, so she goes on and talks about how, you know, but you can buy black powder, gunpowder, the kind they use. Thank God they didn't know this. Well, they do now. You know, if they're watching the news, and they're probably going to be watching liberal news. Good thing they didn't know you could do this without a permit and at these five stores in town for under $40. Yeah. You know, it was just like, oh, so now these idiots aren't going to drive all over the county buying fireworks and taking them apart in their kitchen. They're just going to go buy, you know, oh, can I get five pounds of black powder for my uh, black powder rifle? Thank you for the and go to six different gun stores and buy five pounds. And you're allowed to buy 50 pounds at a time. You know, so it's like, duh. This is so dumb. Criminals are making bomb, and we're going to tell you how. Coming up at six. Yep. Well, and I'm not so naive that I think hardened criminals need to watch the news to learn stuff, but it's those, right. like, dumb 14-year-olds who haven't quite figured out, like, you know, hey, I, I, there's repercussions to being an idiot. And those are the ones I'm like, ugh. Why'd you have to just inform a bunch of people who didn't necessarily, they weren't seeking that information. Nobody was like, I'm going to turn on the AM radio today and see yeah. if I can't get a couple of quick tips on how to pull mail scams. <laughs> All right. So um, that was our gun shop of the day. Normally we do gun shops. We try to feature a new one every single day. So if you've got one that you hang out at, then uh, think about asking them if it's okay to take some pictures to share them with the web. Uh, once you do, share them on the gun channels, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, your YouTube, your own blog, whatever it might be. Then send us an email with a link to it. Uh, let us know on Mondays or really any time during the shows that you have a gun shop you'd like us to feature, and we'd be more than happy to feature it. That's, again, one of the reasons we do a show on a daily basis. True that. Why do we do that? Because big box stores and online uh, distributors for both ammunition and firearms showed us showed us their true nature in 2013 at the beginning of 2013 after sandy hook which was today right the anniversary was the day that just ended the 14th 50th year anniversary four years ago uh four and a half years ago or so uh there was r potential uh infringement by obama those 23 presidential actions he was going to bring through if we if they didn't or as a result of the house not acting on his crazy knee-jerk reaction to those that incident. And um, what did we see? We saw some of the online places go crazy with their prices as far as gouging and exploiting. Uh, we saw uh, some just pull the firearms from their shelves, period. We saw Walmarts and big box stores simply discontinue those items, take them off their list, and bring them back to the factory, do whatever they do with them, but no longer available in stores. So if you're going to depend on a big box store, if you're going to depend on the online stores for supplies and for you know purchases, 
for any time, let alone when there's need or panic or scarcity, then we're in trouble. Uh, that's just one aspect of why the big box and the online stores are a nice feature that they're definitely not something we can or should depend on. The local gun shops give us not only the stuff we need locally, but they're the local watering hole. They're the local uh, water cooler. What am I trying to say? Like a place to get together and watering place. Yeah. yeah, you know, and but the biggest point is um, we know if they if the little gun stores go away, there is no reason at all why why public opinion, you know, all these leftist crazy people who who uh, will get out there with a sign and protest, they could easily convince these big box stores that you know what, it's too much trouble to sell guns. Now who's going to do the FFLs, right? Who like who's going to be left to do it? Because the little gun stores are gone. The big ones don't want to deal with firearms anymore because they get too many people protesting. We're not going to buy your groceries if you're Walmart or all the other stuff that they buy. And guns are only a small part of their business, right? Well, or, and they don't do FFL transfers for the most part. You're not going to find too many of the big box stores that are going to help in a state where you have universal background checks are going to say, oh, you want to transfer that firearm from yourself to your friend who, you know, is paying you off with a favor or, you know, give, giving them a gift or whatever, uh, you know, you want to just do that transfer and the store doesn't make any money except maybe a transfer fee? No. Like, we don't feel like doing that. That's not our thing. So but they can get forced to close down just by, by public force from these, because, you know, it, it's a squeaky wheel syndrome, right? And if you get it, it doesn't have to be that many people, but if they're screaming loud enough, they can make these big box stores you know, kneel to their will because they'll get advertisers, whatever. They, there's all kinds of things they do, right? So it's, it, you know, and that's, it, it's such a slippery slope. As soon as you start losing these little stores, you're losing your independence, really. Then you become dependent upon bigger entities that a big entity that the guns are not their number one priority is so easy to be convinced to just drop it because it's not worth the trouble. Um, you're definitely correct. I think to finish what I was saying with the uh, watering hole or water cooler, uh, they also become the um, uh, bulletin board where you got that little cork board near the door You've got that little rack that has the hunting regulations. That's where taxidermists get in contact. Uh, that's where gunsmiths get in contact with their things. That's where uh, Second Amendment groups, uh, 4-H, uh, scouts, uh, you know, they can post for people, let them know about leagues or whatever, um, competition shooters, right? This is where that kind of stuff takes place. You, you can put all that stuff on the Internet, and sure, it's definitely done on the Internet as well, but it's that outreach and that interaction. That person, another thing we didn't talk about yet or we should talk about is the gun shop being there on the street as one of the many stores in a mall or on a side street, you know, it being a standalone location. Physically being there makes its presence known or the, brings the community, the culture, the industry right there in the face with everything else, justifies it. Just It's the same as your McDonald's. It's the same as your hardware store. Uh, somebody who doesn't necessarily know anybody's into guns, doesn't know how to get on the internet, has no interest in hanging out at a place like gun channels, they can just wander into a gun shop and have that first experience with human beings. Um, they can just walk past it for their whole lives and, you know, again, be told by Hillary Clinton and Bloomberg and Pelosi how bad gun owners are. But every single day they go past it between the nail polish, you know, the nail parlor and their bakery where they get their vegan wrap or whatever the hell. And, you know what I mean, that gun shop has never bit them. That gun shop has never smelled funny. That gun shop has never had a you know, bunch of crazy people running out and yelling at each other. It's just like every other shop on the, pl on the block. You know, so just that gun shop being there, now they go, oh, I found something in Grandpa's closet. I wonder where I take it. Oh, I can take it to that gun shop. And you go in there, and the guy didn't bite my head off. He just told me you know, I could take it to the police, or he could take it. And he just took it, and I didn't have to worry about it anymore. You know, that's that outreach, that ambassadorship for the Second Amendment that they provide. Without that, what do we got? Big box stores? Like, oh, I'm going to go back to the gun department. You know, oh, I got lost behind the bows and arrows and fishing boats. Yeah, not even that, but I'm sure that those big box stores could never possibly be, you know, bought or sold or 
convinced or, or what I, you know. Owned by Canada, Sportsman's Warehouse. Yeah. A great place. You're from Canada. That's why, maybe that's why Bob comes down to Tucson all the time. Oh my God, I didn't even I think about that. It. Bob doesn't like this movie that we talked about the other day called The Puppet Masters. Have you seen the movie yet, Jimmy? I still haven't watched it, no, but that it's, it so makes like, sense now completely. Watch it. Basically, it's Invasion of the Body Snatchers. These little octopus sea ray things climb onto your back and take over you. That's why it's called Puppet Masters. They're the aliens, but they're individuals, kind of, but they also have to be a hive mentality or something. So they have these little squiggly line things that come out of their back that send pheromones to each other, and they have to, like, stand next to each other to do that. And then they go back to this big jellyfish-looking thing that came from outer space that fiddles with their little feelers. And that's how they get their, like, Borg mind going. So maybe Bob has to go over to this Canadian sportsman's warehouse and get his, like, pheromones readjusted or whatever with the Canadian Borg, Borg hive mind. <laughs> I, I thought it was weird that he had a co coffee mug full of slugs. And he was just, like, eating and chewing on them like if they were candies? Yeah, and sprinkling them, the rest of them out on the road and stuff. It was weird. Gummy bears. It's laughing the whole time. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go back to um previous subject. We were talking about... How were we talking about? Gun gifts under 20 bucks. No. A while ago. Um, but no. Jimmy's saying that there, or Monty's saying that uh, in the 80s, there was a, uh, the new, oh, we were talking about the stupid news uh, describing this male situation, this crime. And they did it in such a way that it told people how to commit this crime, right? So, um, uh, he's saying that in the 80s, uh, the news showed uh, people how to cook crack, and there was a freaking rap song that tells you how, like, gives you the recipe. Like step by step, yeah. yeah. Actually, here's how you cook crack. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it, but here's how you do it. But you know, you could go to the library and look it up too. I mean, you know, yeah, well. that's how I figured out how to make my own black powder. Was just went to the library because I wanted to make rocket motors when I was like a kid. Yeah, I remember for, uh, for a while there, there was that uh, anarchist cookbook thing. Was it was a big deal? Like everybody was talking about that thing. I guess before it got banned or whatever. But yeah. Basically, his gun shop was hiring a full-time employee a while back, making him wish he could retire so he could go do that for fun. I think it's worth. It. I mean, especially if you like the shop and you think it's worth it, and it's not going to hurt some sort of situation you got going on there. Uh, say, hey, you got a fart. I see that you got a full-time position open. Would you take two part-times if we could fill your time? And why not? It'd be neat to work at a gun. It is neat to work at a gun shop. I shouldn't say it, it would be. It is, I know it is neat to work at a gun shop. And uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? If you can do four hours of the week and he needs, what is six? What is full-time? 40? If you can do 20 and some other guy can do 20, you know, just, you know, he could put up a sign that says part-time help needed. You know, he yeah. might not actually need it full time. He just needs some hours. And ideally, or yeah, potentially, he could have a need for 10 hours, really. He's just putting that up to, for whatever reason. So anyway, it's worth inquiring. Yeah. That'd be ideal for me. I should go talk to my local gun shop. Something to do in the summer. Well, Bob could go to his local gun shop and then eventually ask for like a certain amount of money to not go hang out there. And then they'd be like, you'd be like on the pay. Yeah. Well, we lost everybody on the gun channel side. All we got is the YouTube side chatting. So we appreciate it. We've got 20 people. Well, as soon as I said that, literally as soon as I said that, three people dropped out. Yeah. But we've got quite a few people watching tonight. Uh, we are way late in the day, but uh, trying to just keep the show going. Because there are people, I'd say a majority of the people probably listen to us after the fact. So uh, by being a couple hours late tonight, it's pissing off everybody that's uh, trying to stay up or listen to the show live. But there are some people that are just up all night anyway, and they don't care what time it is. And then, like I say, the people that are listening to it later probably don't care what time it is either, except that Jimmy's sleeping. 
<laughs> well, the lady stood up um, for Jimmy. Um, Again, um, um, it's getting late. Well, they get to hear us like exactly exhausted, punch drunk, kind of. Yeah. Well, this is after Bob's already been drunk, so it's a little better for some things. <laughs> I'm about two for tonight. I'm kind of like, you know, taking it easy. All right, so um, I think we could get into the gun movie. Every day we try to hit a movie that has something to do with guns, something that you might not have watched in a while, or if you're one of the young ones listening to the show, something you ain't seen yet. And today is the movie called Tremors, about giant bugs that come out of the ground. They drive around in the ground like a whale drives around in the water, so somehow they can just scoot all around through the dirt and sand in, what, Nevada? I think it's Nevada. For some reason, I always thought it was in yeah. New Mexico, but I guess I think it's Nevada. Yeah, I think they're in some whole dunk town in Nevada. Kind of in the middle of nowhere, and they get attacked by these big critters. It is one of the yeah. coolest movies out there, though, no? Um, definitely the best Kevin Bacon movie I've seen. So I don't give out two thumbs very often because I like to reserve it for the movies that get two thumbs, and... This one is getting two thumbs, not only because it's awesome, but it's also the first of, what, five or something other movies that are pretty much all pretty cool. So I'm giving this one two thumbs for sure. It's a gun yeah, it movie. Became, it's a sci-fi movie. It's awesome. Yeah, it became like a cultural thing, too, down the road. So, yeah, like I, I'm giving it two thumbs for sure. I am going to give it two hard, hard thumbs up. It's got Reba McIntyre in it. Just the sexiest woman in country music ever and yeah oh she's oh, hot for Dolly Parton oh yeah oh, oh yeah Reba Reba's a redhead she's fiery <laughs> yeah. I'll give it one floppy thumb and one one solid thumb well I don't know. I, I can't see anything to give it a floppy thumb about it. It's got <laughs> thumb, lots of guns, um, pipe bombs. It's got an old Caterpillar tractor, I think a D8. Um, it's, it's just badass, man. It's got, these, it's got a Dodge Power Wagon in it. It's got giant worms. Best movie ever. I kind of like it. And it had Reba McIntyre in it. And it's funny, and it's not like funny in like a goofy way. It's fun, or it's kind of funny in a goofy way. It's not like funny in a mean way, or like a you know, you can just watch it. It's funny. I like it. Yeah. All right. So um, that's the movie of the day. If we got ideas for movies, let us know. We like say we schedule the show on Mondays, but we'll take uh, suggestions at any time. Daily Gun Show at Gmail dot com. Uh, we. Don't really do this show. I should. I, just, I mean, we we probably should be doing this show to try to make money. But we are, you know, trying to cover costs. The costs allow it, or the, the funds that are raised by the show allow us to do things like send off mailings, as thank yous for people that win the tactical pop quiz. People that participate in the various ways, uh, we try to send stuff out to them. So um, we do appreciate. We have a Patreon account out there. Uh, so if you go to Patreon and look for Daily Gun Show, there's always a link in our show descriptions. Uh, we appreciate anybody that is uh, able to financially help the show out. Uh, some people think it's neat to be part of the creation of content like this, and we're you know, using Patreon as our method for that. We also have a store, gearwebsites.com is our online store, and we've got, well, we I don't actually think we have our mic and muzzle patches in stock right now, but we will change that. In fact, the next time I do stickers with Flippy, we're going to do mic and muzzle stickers. So we'll have some of those as well. But uh, there are products over there at the gear website store, stuff that we build here in Tucson, stuff that are our designs that we have made uh, for us, and um, things like the, the cards that guys were talking about earlier when we were talking about $20 gifts. Uh, so we have quite a few products over there. All the stuff you buy over there keeps gun websites online and thus keeps these shows, all of our projects going. So thanks to everyone who's able to participate with that, um, both when it's gift giving time and uh, throughout the year, because it's literally those efforts that keep us going and give us the time to spend on doing this stuff. Yeah, what he yeah. said. Yeah, so gun of the day? Yeah. 
What did I put down for gun of the day? I don't remember anymore. Oh, yeah, because it's show 464. I actually found a gun that was a model 464. The Mossberg 464 in 3030. Huh. I thought I'd remember 464 being a, what do you call it, a gun thing? Yeah. Well, it's a typical Mossberg, right? It's uh, low quality. Um, it functions. It works. It's reasonably accurate. You know, it's like, you know, your typical 30-30 lever action. But, you know, it's got a grody action. It's fit and finish is pretty poor. Just typical Mossberg, right? Um, but it works. So, yeah, is it a... Would I want one? Sure. If somebody was going to give me one, I'd take it. I mean, you know, I know, nice beater gun. Be good truck gun. Throw behind the seat. Something nobody's ever going to look twice at as being, you know, super tactical or anything and yet it's still 30 30 it does function you gotta you gotta really it, rock it it's but, not uh, it's not tech it's not tactical what well you could make one tactical certainly oh but snap would you? yeah that's ridiculous but you know that's the kind of thing you can do with a cheap you don't care about gun this is not a this is not what a win gesture. Is this like just it's not a nazi gun so now it's like throw it under the bus like if you like big <laughs> guns then here you go no, no, i'm just saying this is just just your, like all moss yeah. are garbage great review well, basically well they're not garbage they're just crude right they're they're a crude inexpensive gun that works fine it's, it's like a high point the turd next to you on the seat then that's exactly what you want at mossberg yeah <laughs> they're fine if you like absolute trash they're, if they made one in if they made one in in like 45 acp it would be an ideal companion for a high point you know i don't know this one here in the stainless looks pretty neat they, yeah, but yeah, you're not getting a good look at it. You get a really good look at it, and it's like the fit and finish is crap on those things. No, uh, I don't think you're right for it. Yeah. I haven't played with them. I got my Winchester. I guess I never really looked elsewhere. Yeah, no, compared to a Winchester, it's like that, you know, um, difference between a $100 horror and a $5 horror. I don't know. I, I, I mean, Mossberg has been making guns a long time, but... I mean, it's a Winchester done, done. Like, it's a lever. It's a Winchester. Uh -huh. You'd look for it. It's just, yeah. I mean, like, as far as the functioning, other than it's rough, because, you know, it's not as well finished. It's just not a well-finished gun, but it is a functional gun. You can use it for hunting. It shoots fine. It's just, you know, it's not that butter smooth Winchester action. All right. You keep saying that. I think you're not getting, you're, you're definitely not in the pocket of big Winchester. You're in the <laughs> Somebody against Mossberg or whatever, though. So, is it something that you think that can be polished up and cleaned up with a little fit and finish or a little extra aftermarket parts, or is it just you, you can polish any kind of turd? No, no, not really. I mean, think about some of the Chinese stuff. I mean, there's definitely some Chinese stuff that's got some wiggle room, but there's some stuff that just ain't you ain't gonna make it good. Like it's it's just badly made. Well, like it, it's yeah. bad. Right, but I mean, you know, um, it's like okay, you can. You can, uh, trying to think. you can make a Chevy truck look good, but it's never going to be as nice as a Dodge or a Ford. Right? You know what I mean? It's like, it's just that utilitarian, you know, like everybody and their dog can have one. Yeah. But other than that, it's, it's an okay gun. If that's what you can, you have and you like it, well, good. Um, Lowered expectations works for a lot of people, whether you're dating or buying a gun. Wow, I feel like you cut the, the Mossberg tension here. Like, it's I feel like Mossberg 464 and Bob were dating, and now that Bob is doing the review of it, yeah. it didn't turn out well, and now he's doing the review. Yeah, Moss, he's caught the Mossberg with his friend or something like that, and it was just. <laughs> If you like whore prostitutes, you're going to yeah. like... <laughs> if you like a $5 toothless whore, then you'll love this Mossberg lever action. Yeah, there you go, man. All right. So, uh... <laughs> all right. So, let's see. Let's just see if there's anything left to salvage. Maybe we can take this to a surplus store and get something for it. 
training. What is the best distance to actually check the side chat? Um, what is the best distance to actually train at a dis? What is the best distance to actually train at with different guns for different purposes? We're gaining viewers. So thanks for the new people watching us. These are probably people watching us in the morning for them. <laughs> I don't think you're alone in there. We've got 20 something people watching and more and more keep jumping in. So again, uh, if somebody wants to read the internal chat, we can ask again, uh, <laughs> where, we, where we want to go with this for training? What's the best distance to actually train at? What do you guys think? I mean, obviously, great. You got like a yard or like a big property. This is a question that you could get into. But I think for most people, you're going to an outdoor, indoor range that is either monitored or, you know, potentially what you got rules or whatever. So you don't really get to choose. Ideally, you got an indoor range with that little cordy thing so you can put the thing at whatever distance you might want within reason. You can't probably bring it too close and it probably has a distance limit, right? But then at an outdoor range, you might have those little pegs in the ground or some kind of a system where it's permanently at certain distances or you might have like a target frame that you can move. Again, they're going to be like within reason. You're not going to be able to put that target really close for just real close practice and you're probably not going to be able to go further than the berm, right? So... Uh, what are we thinking is the best, uh, I guess, within those parameters or like uh, just with, with the acknowledgement that if you had your way to be able to put it anywhere? Uh, are we uh, I don't know. Uh, the, the range you always hit the target at because that's when you should shoot if that's all you can always hit the target at. So, I don't know. What? so you're saying never challenge yourself, just whatever you're good at. Just keep doing that and only do that. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I think I'll go with that. Well, the different purposes, like, I mean, if you're doing, uh, if, you're, if you're training for specific things like home defense, obviously. Home, de home defense? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's pretty quiet machine gun fire. I got to say, is that suppressed? Yeah, that's coming from far away. It sounded like it was far away. It was just uh, probably because of where our, the speakers are. I don't know. Uh, so who was telling me earlier? Oh, you know what? I turned down my bandwidth earlier. Let me turn it back up and see if you guys think I'm if the volume goes weird or if I'm skipping. Let me know. Anyway, that tells us that it's uh, time for our tactical pop quiz. We break in at any time during our show for an open book quiz. So most of the time it's open book. Um, go ahead. Oh, yeah. You guys uh, know that sound? Time to crack them knuckles, whip out them keyboards, and get ready for the tactical pop quiz. Today, we are doing another little uh, visual one. So, uh, oh, it's making me sick. Yeah. Well, you know, it's I kind of just woke up. Screen. Better. What is this here? Restart. Uh, no. Nope. Postpone. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. next, time that next time that happens, click the little drop down because it was it's always preset to stupid ten minutes. You can flip it to four hours and then it won't. Oh, post. okay. Right. But then let it do that because that wants an update, so let it do it. Yeah. Cool. Now, what is this? Not now, but you know, in the future sometime. Oh, we're yeah. already in the quiz already. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're happening. going. Like, not hot. There's no preference. This is it. Eventually, there's going to be an answer that's 42, and whoever says that first is going to win. Uzi grip? No. Come on. Negative. Come on. Grip. Oh, so, oh, 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 I know what it is. Three? Is it three? No. 42? Come on. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Come on. This is, we're getting a giveaway status here. This is like giving it away now. Oh, God, that's giving it away right there. Okay, Pants got it. All right. Pants on the gun channel side, Mac 11. Oh, wait, is that a Mac no. 11? No. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 Pink Panther's got a Mac 10. Uh, let me give up the goods too quick. Mac 9, Mac 11. 
Oh, that was Pink. Guy. Whoever said Mac 10 got it. Mac 10, that was Pink. Pink on the YouTube side. So we will throw a link out there to our website, dailygunshow.com, where we have a place you can uh, leave us what or your place to send uh, uh, your prize. And then we will trying to talk and type at the same time here. Uh, keep track of who's winning these tactical pop quizzes and have more fun with that in the future. But thanks, Pink. Congratulations, Pink. Uh, uh, Midnight Range apparently didn't flex his fingers enough. He missed the send button. So, so I tell you, so you got to crack your knuckles, then whip out your keyboards. <laughs> so order, order to this. Jimmy's basically order of operation for you. He's doing the whole job for you. Yeah, I'm, I've ex I should have mansplained it correctly, but I I don't know. I guess. Yeah, you actually showed the whole gun, and then went, "Oh, wait a minute, that's wrong." <laughs> I think we should to put it back on. Jimmy needs his sleep. <laughs> so, are you going to finish the quiz there, Bob? What? Oh, right. I guess that makes uh, Pink the uh, t daily tactical hot shot of the day. Oh, God. I wish Smuggy, Smuggy, Smuggy made it back here. I'm looking into some sort of an app for the phone or else a thing for the computer where I could just get a bunch of buttons and we can just hit a button for stuff like that, like a real radio show would do. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, for participating in that. I think we were actually talking about what is the best distance to train at, though. And uh, I think I interrupted Jimmy, if you remember where you were at. with. What oh, yeah, um, for different purposes. Like, if you're going to be for training for a home defense type of scenario obviously it's going to be closer maybe around seven yards maybe 10 yards at top something like that um so i mean yeah it, it depends on what you're training for but whose house whose house are you in that you're going to shoot across 30 feet that's 10 that's yards somewhat, right? it, the the way that i got oh, the house homie? yeah that's what i mean yeah yeah, yeah but well, extreme i mean you can find a 30 foot shot but what are most of them going to be they're going to be like five, six feet. I don't know, because you can have a hallway that goes down the length of a house. You can have like a garage. You can have a big living room. If, I, I'm, if I'm outside having a smoke and somebody were to break and enter through the front of the house and I'm walking in, I'm about a good 10 yards away from them, from the staircase to the back door. If I were to catch them walking upstairs and, you know, the kid's up there, so... I don't know, and I've know. heard stories that Jimmy's house is so big he hasn't even been in all the rooms yet. Yeah, there are uh, there are spaces that I haven't been in. It was <laughs> like the Winchester house that just keeps going. Somebody I opened said the door about, yesterday and almost fell off the second floor. Somebody was saying that about some rich guy. That he's got a house so big he hasn't even been in all the rooms. That's crazy. Bob's got so many cars, he hasn't even been in all of them. <laughs> no, I've been in all of them. My car version of it. No, I, I, I'm sure I've been in all of them. Well, one of the things that we've uh, maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't, is uh, our friend uh, Ghost Tactical. He does a, 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 what do you call it, like a firearms drill of the month where he'll put a drill out there. A drill is like a, you know, a, a, series of tasks uh you know uh what i'm trying to say um like a target that'll have a series of uh things like draw from the holster or use your offhand or take three shots and then pause or reload or something you know it'll give you some tasks and then uh challenge you so that you can basically shoot it and then next time at the range shoot it next time at the range shoot it and then set up some data points for comparison practice with whatever you're, you know, use it as a way to determine what your weak points are or what your best points are so you know what to practice or whatever. So he puts out these drills every month and uh, you're right, I probably should ban myself because of all these ghost tactical self-promotions. Damn it. He's reddited me. Yeah, I feel like all I, all I hear about is ghosts nowadays. Like, I, I don't know. But one of the things I like about the dot drill, which is is one, he did a modified dot drill this month. The dot drill is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, so anybody can print it on any piece of paper on any printer. It's black and white, and it circles bigger, bigger than most coins, like the old dollar coins, maybe a little bit bigger than that. 
um, but smaller than a Coke can, maybe about as big around as a Coke can uh, is a big round. And there's just nine circles, and it'll have you shoot with your one hand, your other hand, uh, shoot three rounds, draw, or yeah, draw if you can at the range, or pick it up from the table, whatever they allow you to do. Uh, change magazines, tr shoot to empty and reload. You know, some tasks, some manipulations that it's going to walk you through. And, and it does it in 50 rounds at a target that's an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. So not only is it easy to print and everything, but you can also take it home. And it's not a big, goofy, giant piece of target, right? It's just an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. You can have a folder with the blanks on one side, your shot targets on the other. Uh, keep note of what date it was that you shot the target. And you can just on a regular table take them out and look at your progress. Look if you've done better or worse or whatever as far as a score, just at whatever uh, tasks it was having you do. Anyway, I think that's a great target. I've known about it for a long time. He modified it by going and taking it down to 20 rounds, which is pretty clever because now you do the same drill. You just do it with less rounds. So you only use 20 rounds. So you could run it twice and only use 40 rounds or run it three times and just use 10 rounds more than the original 50. Uh, you know, 50 is a box of ammo usually. So anyway, uh, he modified it that way. I've modified it in the past in a different way where we had a different situation than most people. We don't have to go to an indoor range or some range with fixed distances. We can just go out to the desert. So a lot of people just go out to the forest or their backyard or whatever. Uh, for those situations, we made it where you do more walking towards and away from the target. Uh, for We modified one dot drill to use rifles a little bit bigger target and then went way back and did distance uh, prone and kneeling and then standing and moving so uh, that's as far as distance I think the ultimate is to be able to take a drill like that and apply distance and movement to it uh, which gives you well at least for us it gave us ultimate uh, practice and evaluation of our weaknesses and our skills Well, I, I mean, that's such an open-ended question is the problem is, I mean, what distance should you train at? Well, <laughs> what do you want to shoot? If you want to be a sniper, then you probably should train at really long range. If you want to be a close combat guy or if you want, you know, and if you want to be all those things and train at all of them. But, I mean, what's what's the, what are you going to utilize? Then probably close range, right? Yeah, this is definitely one of them, like, individual, up to the individual kind of thing, like, you know, I don't know. That's what I was going to say, is maybe the way to look at it is, what is your house situation? What's the longest distance in your house? What's the most realistic scenario? You're going to come around and be in the living room, they're going to be busting through the front door, you know, or more than likely, they're going to be coming through the garage, you know, so whatever your your actual situations might be, jot those down, take those to the range, and shoot appropriately. Now, that's the best idea I've heard so far. So I think we've solved it with that. Figure out what, what you're most likely going to have to be shooting and train appropriately. So basically, the people that are listening, the 22 people, thank you very much, that are listening right now, and the hundreds, maybe thousands and thousands of people that will listen to this afterwards, uh -huh. now don't have to go to some fancy instructor, some blowhard who's going to charge them thousands of dollars to shoot. And they basically just stole all that knowledge from us. So hopefully they feel guilty and they indulge heavily in the uh, gear website store. Or support us on Patreon. And now we shamed them. We shamed, we guilt shamed them into giving us money. We can move on. So mm -hmm. uh, we did a gun of the day. We did a movie of the day. There's gun history, unfortunately. So today is a shitty day in gun history for at least two big counts, and I'll start looking through the stupid uh, history thing over here, but it's the 14th. Uh, again, it's difficult to show at midnight which day to count. So we're going to kind of have hybrid history days here, I guess. And um, oh, I closed the stupid ad. Um, the 14th is two anniversaries. Five years ago today was uh, Sandy Hook. So obviously... There's a lot of people exploiting that still five years later. Um, and then uh, it was also the anniversary of uh, uh, Border Patrol agent Brian Terry, who uh, uh, was killed by one of the AK-47s from Fast and the Furious. So again, in his honor, uh, 
I think that it's important to remember this date and obviously uh, for the what what do you call it the arrogance or the corruption I mean it was done deliberately it wasn't an accident so the corruption that was uncovered with the operation fast and furious uh, as well as the um, um, my, uh, Mike Deddy, our friend who did uh, the Operation Wide Receiver here in Tucson. Uh, both of those brought to light this, this situation and obviously the people involved want to hear nothing of it again ever and the people on the left who want to ignore this will never bring it up. So unfortunately it's our obligation to be ever vigilant to bring crap like this up. So it doesn't do me any I don't have any joy in hashing it out, uh, but again, is a memorial to Brian and uh, all the Border Patrol, really. And uh, again, everyone is a Second Amendment advocate or person who enjoys the Second Amendment or is just tolerant of the Second Amendment who gets thrown under the bus by the antis. It's sad that a day like today, they can use things like both of these incidents against us, and they will. They don't care. And... Uh, we can do nothing and watch it happen, or we can take the challenge and do something about it. Yep. So what did I do with that other one? Not forget, people who make those sacrifices. Let's see, 1890 today, uh, today the 15th today, uh, U.S. Army soldiers attempt to arrest Sitting Bull at his cabin and Standing Rock, South Dakota. Shooting breaks out, uh, and Lieutenant Bullhead shoots uh, Sitting Bull. Yeah, there's a few different versions of what happened, but... What is this? Uh, 1965, the United States drops 12 tons of bombs on an industrial center near some harbor in North Vietnam. Okay. Sorry, I thought that was more interesting. There's a lot, actually a lot of stuff happening today. Let's see. In 2005, the F-22 Raptor entered active service with the Air Force. 2005. Yeah, all 189 of them. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Today, the 15th, we have a little bit better news. Uh, 1923, a famous firearms designer was born. He invented a machine gun. Oh, who could that have been? Snap. Are we having another tactical pop quiz? Is this happening? I feel like it's happening right now. I think he's, could. A, he's a he's a submachine gun designer, born in 1923, December 15th to be precise. Oh, and he invented a machine gun. It was a nine millimeter machine gun. Nice. Whoa! What's the name? Timer. Okay, so I don't more think time. anyone knows it's happening. They don't seem to be. They're not reacting. So uh, it it's was. Scary. Really? Gatling? Born in 1923? Yeah, and 9, nine millimeter? Come on. 1923. Yeah, uh, I never touched that. It's a German Israeli firearms designer. German Israeli firearms designer. A 9 oh. millimeter submachine gun. Oh. 1923. He would have probably been nine, maybe 20 years old when he invented it. Luger. Luger. Midnight Range. Think for a minute. Israeli designer Luger. German-born Israeli. Best remember. Oh, okay. And the <laughs> of the Uzi submachine gun. John Z. I could barely hear him because he talks so softly, types so softly over there. But it, yes, it was Uzi Gal, the, the German-Israeli firearms designer who's best known for designing his Uzi submachine gun. Very good, John. Thank you very much. John, oh, that makes you the secondary tactical hot shot of the day. 
Ooh. Never forget. <clears throat> All right. So um, that was the pop quiz. So it was the gun of the day, That's the gun shop, all three topics, tons of commercials out there. Talked about that news thing. We talked about Brian. I think we got it all. What's happening tomorrow or later on today, I guess, at this point? Pretty much in a half an hour, Jimmy will be starting early watch. <laughs> yeah, that's coming on uh, about 9 Eastern. And then, um, crap. oh, no, you know what? Pottery ain't running a lobby tomorrow because he got his uh, live stream and take live stream stuff taken away. Um, so I don't know what's going on. The lobby is, is up in the air for tomorrow. Connery got a strike? Yeah. Yeah. And it was actually, uh, all G Web's fault. Too coincidentally what enough. Strike for? I don't know. Um, it was, uh, some video, but the video said even in the description that we could use the video. So I have no idea what happened, but they ended up striking him. And he didn't get an actual, the weird thing is, is that he didn't get an actual strike on his account, but they banned him from live streaming and they didn't give him like a time or anything like that. So there's no strike against him on his account, but his live streaming is banned according to him. So he's disputing it. Uh, I think he just wants to take a vacation. Yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Connery, take that. <laughs> and I, I, you know what? I tend to agree with Clover Tech over there on the YouTube side. He blames Night Strike, and Night Strike wasn't there, but I still feel like Night Strike was, had something mm-hmm. to do with it or was involved some way. I think almost anything bad that happens is pretty much Night Strike's fault. Yeah. It, like sneaks in and then sneaks out. Yeah, well, he's just, he's like stealthy. Yeah. Weird. But, uh, yeah, so then after that, what is it, a Friday show? So we have, uh, is it Clover Tech and Edge, or is it Edge and Clover Tech? Clover's first, I think. Okay. So, Did Ellis do a show tonight? I have no idea, man. I was running around and then got, uh, ate too much quesadilla and fell asleep. Hey, what's up with that? That was a barbecue quesadilla? It was, uh, yeah, so it was pulled pork and a quesadilla, and it was one of the best things that I've eaten in a long time. But they make them just with bean, they make them with cheese, and it's a, it, yeah, it's a really good joint. And they got, uh, oh, you would love it too. Next time you come out here, I got to take you to that place because they got a farmer's market, all organic stuff, and it's, it's real neat. I got a bunch of peanut brittle there. Pink is right on. No, I'm definitely down for that. Um, Pink is saying that he can do one in the morning for you, so it might be a little early, but he can start one. Oh no, no, no! I'm doing uh, uh, early watch tomorrow, but uh, we're needing uh, like a lobby for the rest of the day, like leading up to the prime time stuff. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, we'll get pants or somebody else who's out there doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Clover saying, of course, he's always first. <laughs> well, that makes sense because, you know, nobody would notice after that anyway. So since they're the only two that's on Friday night, I feel like their name should be together, like uh, like Brad Jelena or something, like Clover, Clover Edge, Edge or Tack. Edge Tack. Edge, edge Tack. So, um, <laughs> uh, who was saying this? I don't know. Anyway, somebody's saying that gun channels went down and it's working for me, so uh, just give it a second. Sometimes in the middle of the night is when they'll do their server resets or whatever goopy stuff. So, mm. All right, so then, of course, we'll be back here tomorrow night for tomorrow night's show, and that is episode number 465. We've been doing this for 465 episodes. I don't think we've ever skipped one, so we might have missed one, or one of us or two of us might have missed a show here and there, but... Uh, pretty much been doing it every single weekday, 465 days now. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing gun tech, uh, rust removal, uh, gun biz, what did you buy? And then uh, alternative gun topics, the best guns of 2017. 
as it's getting to be the end of the year, I suppose we'll be doing some of that kind of stuff. I've been thinking about doing top fives, stealing that from Matt. So give us some feedback as audiences out there, if you're listening live in the comments or always on email, dailygunshow at gmail.com. If you're listening later, let us know if you think top fives are worth doing. I know some people loathe them, but other people think they're cool. And I, I'm down either way. Uh, we could do them a little bit differently than Matt does, probably cooler or better. But um, yeah, give us some feedback, eh? With that, uh, Bob can. Yeah. All right. Well, if we're actually done, and we're not going to interrupt me as usual, but um, <laughs> I've actually got a very short quote today, and it's by Thomas Jefferson. But before that, I just want to remind everybody: please like, share, subscribe, uh, tell your friends. Uh, if you can support us on Patreon, link will be in the show description. Um, but yeah, let's finish it up with our quote because it's damn late. Um, Thomas Jefferson, stop interrupting me, <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, just hold on one sec. No. Oh, geez, I knew he was going to do this. All right, go ahead. All right. So, uh, Thomas Jefferson, no free man shall ever be debarred the use of arms. So. That's what one of the founders said. I think that's something the rest of the country should just live by. See y'all. Talk to you tomorrow. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsites.com. Like this. Make, 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 Craig like this. Make, 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 Craig, make, make, make. <laughs> What? After the show is over? What? For the seven people that are still listening, there's a special after the show hidden Easter egg tactical pop quiz. So for the people that are still listening, what was the name of the song that we opened the show with? But oh, they, oh. they so told me to carry every day, and <laughs> I thought we were... <laughs> This is insanity. I don't know. Oh, pants said crap. <laughs> was it crap? Good night, guys. Take care was not the correct song. <laughs> nope, it wasn't that one. It was not the song Crap. <laughs> Itsy Bitsy Spider? <laughs> oh. George gets it right at the end. Very nice.